Jason from Trading Games here, and today I'm going to take you on a tour of the Trading Games collection of video games, and uh, going to welcome you into my room of doom um, that I've uh, built over the years. Come on in and uh, take a quick look around, and then what we're going to do is uh, me and Chris are going to give you a tour, and we're going to go through each section one by one and just kind of talk about video games a little bit and uh, show you some neat stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, while you're watching this video, we just want you to make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We'll always try to bring you some more fun content. It's a little change this week. And uh, it's been a long time coming since I'm showing the collection off as a whole. A lot of things have changed over the years. So uh, we'll just start going through things one by one and see how, you know, see how it uh, we comes out here. So stay tuned. Let's watch this video. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about how this room came to be. Um, I needed a nice safe place to store the video games, so I built this, it's like a cage. As you saw at the beginning, I have a gate that I keep locked, and only I have access into this room. So what I did was, I used a grid, all sorts of different type of reinforced grid, uh, like some like heavy duty bars to build shelving all the way around. So basically what I did was, I did each console has its section, and then above it is the matching systems. Um, and that goes around the whole entire room. And then I built the island too. So, you know, it's basically floor to ceiling video games. And I think there's, you know, a little over 6,000 video games in here. I've never sat down and counted exactly, but you know, it's 45 games per shelf, you know, times the number that's in here. Let's just guess and stuff like that. So, but it's all sorts of systems. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to bookmark those systems in the, in the, down in the description below, like when the Genesis section starts, when the Atari section starts, Nintendo and so on and so forth. And uh, me and Chris are going to be passing the camera back and forth. You know what I mean? We're each going to... Now I'm going to kind of focus on some of the older stuff in here that I know a lot about. And then we're just going to pull some fun stuff. So let's get right to it right now. Let's just start right here. So let's start right as you walk in the room. This little bit of hodgepodge of stuff. Um, I recently emptied out this select section. I, I used to have a Sega CD collection and a Turbo Graphics collection uh, that I got rid of. Um, I had an offer I couldn't refuse. But, uh, you know, this is some CDI stuff. Uh... You know, everybody has to have their Zelda. Uh, well, I'm again, hold on. Still need slip that sleeve. slip sleeve. I'm just and, rubbing uh, it in. You know, hey, some <laughs> microvision handheld stuff, some old links. Uh, this is a complete Nuon, Samsung Nuon collection, and uh, the, the fancy uh, boomerang controller for it. Uh, here's a Vetrix collection. These are the Vetrix, the systems up above. I'll show you that in a different picture a little bit later. But, you know, these are Vetrix games. Um, and the original boxes and some extra controllers. And this is how everybody plays their Vetrix nowadays. So they buy a multi-cart and then you get everything on in one. And you don't have to dig out all these things. Virtual Boy Collection. Um, still missing one, but that's okay. I recently had Wario Land graded. I thought that would be fun to, to be graded. Uh, panning down, there's some... Um, just some different stuff. Here's what I have left of the Sega 32X collection. Um, the Virtual Fighter training t-shirt and VHS. Kind of kind of just a neat oddity to keep. You know, that's the kind of stuff when we talk about, you know, valuable versus rare. I'm not even going to pretend to associate a value with that, but that thing is exceptionally hard to find, right. you know? And so the rarity of that is just through the roof, to be honest. But it doesn't have a value really yeah. assigned to it. You know I mean? That's, the, that's what's neat about it. So moving down, um, this is a complete Sega Master System set. And um, there's also a couple of the import games mixed in. Uh, but uh, as you're coming around, uh, let's see, you know, here's something that's really neat. So a lot of people talk about Golden Axe and Sonic um, being just uh, pretty, pretty rare games. But what really makes Golden Axe unique and special is it actually has a sticker on the outside of plastic rack with wrapped with a different UPC on it. So that makes this the true US release of this game. Now what's really unique about Sonic is it, the exact same thing applies to it. I don't have it on mine, and, you know, unfortunately. So this box, you know, could have come from overseas. Same exact box, same exact artwork, except it doesn't have the sticker on it. So this isn't the true US release of it. Something like that, it doesn't really matter to me, but that's, that's important to a lot of people with their collections. I, I would definitely call it a neat piece to have, you know, in your Master System collection. Um, and then, so, just some games I've had graded. 
um, some Super Nintendo stuff. You know, I just filled in the shelf. Uh, my some test cartridges and my Star Fox competition. Star Fox weekend. Yeah. So this is a neat thing. Even this, this is a Sega Nomad. This is a portable case, official license case. We actually just had one of those come through the yeah, store not too long. You don't see ago. them very often. Yeah, they're really cool. So as a whole, the Genesis section is all the way down to here. So I have my Genesis collection in alphabetical order. Um, I didn't do it by manufacturer. I just did it you know, pure, straight up alphabetical order. Now... What you're seeing as you're panning over this is you're going to see a lot of doubles. And basically what we're going to be talking about is variations. So, you know, if you come all the way down where you're going to be heading here soon, Beavis and Butthead in the clamshell plastic and a cardboard box variation. So that's basically why you're going to see two and three of some of these games in the Genesis section. Well, cool. kind of coincides a little bit about what we talked about last week, where, you know, there are multiple printings and multiple variants for multiple games, you know. You see those two Paper Boys over there, Paper Boy 2, to be specific. So, and this is this is something that's really neat. So, let's pull Punisher. Everybody knows Punisher is special and unique and hard to find, and it's highly sought after, but really what makes Punisher special is when you can have completeness, like this little temporary tattoo can really affect you know the the rarity and how much this game is going to sell for and uh you know trying to make a game complete with a registration card and manual you know there's a joke for me with that game that my friends tease me on because that game kind of finds me i found i think four copies in one year of that game at like flea markets and pawn shops never found tattoos in any of them no manual either yeah. honestly who, who would have kept a sega power strip complete in its original box. I mean, this, I loved these things. This, you know, if you had the uh, Tower of Doom, you know, with the uh, Sega Genesis, the 32X and Sega CD, each one had a big fat power pack and there'd be no room to fit them on a standard power strips of the day. So this spaced them out and it says Sega. Sega. Play, playing with power, plug into the convenience. This is really neat. Let's see, what else? Oh yeah, here's something. Here's a unique oddity. So the Mario Lemieux with an actual hockey puck. Um, you know, it's a double thickness box. And basically the puck is has a cut out on the cardboard and it shows through. That's really neat. Now the crazy thing is, is like, so this Genesis came, came with the hockey puck. But the hockey puck really isn't rare. It's the box. Because the hockey puck, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them, if not thousands. Because they gave these out at games and stuff like that. But finding the box that holds this, you know, this... Very odd little Sega Genesis piece. It's really cool. Um, yeah, it's just really neat to have. So, and as as I was saying, you know, up above the Genesis section is like all the different systems. So I know it's really hard to see in here. And let's see if that works going to the other side. But, you know, there's basically what we're talking about is variations on systems. So, you know, of course, we're talking different size boxes, different release dates. You know, the check is light and, you know, light and dark. Um... And then you have like the pack-in with Sonic, the pack-in with Sonic and Knuckles, and it's just a different variation. The NFL bundle, Core, the Streets of Rage, there's more behind here like Lion King and uh, just all sorts of different ones hiding out behind here. The real late release when they went to like the... Model 3. Yeah, the, well it's the Model 3 made by Majesco, I think that's what it was, you know, and then there's like matching controllers for Model 3 and stuff. <laughs> Look at yeah. that. My personal favorite of those is the Streets of Rage one. Not because it's Streets of Rage, but I just love that, like, orange burst. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, that's just such an attractive box. So, my personal fave. So, finishing now with Genesis, PS1. Well, there's not much to talk about on the PS1 section because I started selling my set last year. Um, I think the prices have gone to a point where I wanted to move that set out but i did keep my long box collection my big huge uh variations selection and i still have a lot of controllers and memory cards and stuff but all these spaces are this was a complete set uh but now it's gone but i still have all my different systems you know i started moving some of them out also you know real neat ps1 ought to be as a bridge racer with that the namco controller um you know here's all the point blank games I really love the Jungle Book dance pad thing, you know? Uh, those are the stuff that you just don't 
you're not going to see that all the time, yeah, you know? I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, really that's awesome. Oddity that I still have. I love this type of stuff. I love just the weird randomness that, that was out on the system. Probably a 9.8A++ in that guy. It was a blister. It's too bad it's greatest hits. Yeah. You know, that would be really clean in there to get graded. Um, but I was really into getting weird variations when I was collecting PS1, so I just always loved, you know, like the collector sets. And uh, uh, this is my, you know, favorite set. I've talked about it for years, these value packs, you know, with total junk games in them. There's yes. a King of Fighters game in there. Yeah, this was one of the better <laughs> ones, but card games, racing, and board game, you know, that's, uh. But um, the funny thing about it is they're numbered. So it's number one, six, five, three, and two. I'm missing number four, and I have been missing number four forever. I finished this PS1 set more than 10 years ago. I've had every single major YouTube in the United States try to find me number four in this slip sleeve and I can't find it. I really want it before I die. So if you have it, let me know. I also think it's really important to point out the best Final Fantasy. Oh, ew, no, not that one. Oh yeah, that's the one. That's, <laughs> that's the one that y'all need to be playing. So yeah, that's the PS1 section. Mmm. I just want to at least get a little bit over in that corner. Yeah, you know, I PlayStation corner, you know, PS3 box, a, a white PS2, a refurbished PS2. Cool. All right, so the whole island on both sides is Atari. So this whole side is Atari 2600. The other side has more 2600 and all the 5200, 7800, and all the really weird accessories. And then stacked on top of this island is all the different systems but i uh, have like in televisions here so when you start looking at ataris there's so many different systems out there uh so you have a vader system with joysticks and paddles and then a vader system with just joysticks you have sears four switch six switch heavy sixer sears and you got a heavy sixer atari factory reconditioned models sears video arcade twos different variations that's why there's so many different ataris to collect for and it goes for that for in television like there's these are all in television systems here all different packaging tandy vision television one and television two in, in, in television the super pro system um different coleco visions different atari accessories you know like wireless joysticks and the little 2600 Junior came in like a I love that thing. lunch box. I've sold nicer ones, so I should probably upgrade it. Um, the Atari Lynx, Atari 7800. Um, but you know, here is really when you really want to talk about jewels and rarity of a system. This is a Family Fun and Fitness for you Nintendo people. You probably recognize that name from Athletic World and Stadium events. Well, this is from 1982, basically. Video Jogger and Video Reflex. Shows the family running and playing, you know, sports games. It has a nice fold-out pad. Recognize the color pattern to this. You know, it's kind of Nintendo-ish. Very rare. Even with tape all over this box, this thing is extraordinarily rare. So, just a really neat piece to have. But, as you're looking you know, down this row of Atari, it's basically by manufacturer. So you have like original Atari, you have your Sears, you have your Activision games and your US games and your Exonics and your Parker Brothers and so on and so forth. And that's how I did instead of doing straight up alphabetizing. I think um, I like the color uniformity and the font and stuff like that. It would mess with I don't want to even pretend I have OCD, but it would bother me if it didn't look uniform. <laughs> yep. Here's a really neat piece. So this is uh, Tron, you know, and this is, you actually got the joystick, and then there's two games included with it, and it's the actual, like, a blue Tron joystick is in there. It's really hard to see in this light, but it's just like the arcade stick, but it's for the 2600, and these boxes are so flimsy, they're usually destroyed. It's awesome. Yeah, rest, it's a really neat piece. Rest in peace, Daft Punk. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, 
know, there's lots of really, really rare Atari games, you know, we can, you know, we don't need to point all of them out, but it's just neat. You know, Atari has so many variations, it makes you want to keep collecting and keep collecting. You know, I mean, here's four Demons to Diamonds, you know, so you, you have your original release, and then you have your international box release, and then the backs would be different, you know, on these two, and it's just so many variations. What really makes Atari fun, but but it, they're not expensive. I mean, now they're 10 to $15, but that's relatively cheap. Um, so, but let's move around to the other side for Atari also. Oh, yeah, you spotted that. So this is the Bernstein Bears or was, Bernstein Bears? I was, that's why I pulled it out, Mandala Effect, guys. Yeah, this is really neat, too. So I asked Chris. That's awesome. I asked Chris not to step on the cassette player on the other side. It was at shoe level, and uh, these are actually cassette tapes that have data on them and a cartridge, and it has a special cassette deck where you play the tapes and it's music coming through, and then the tapes and the the cartridge sync and work together via this uh, special uh, cassette tape. There's a bunch deck. of typos on it though. It should say Berenstein Bears. Yeah. Freaking. They came back here and changed it. They did. Yep, I mean, I'm just all, saying man. that's what happened. I know. So, um, like I was saying, on this side of the island, it's just more Atari 2600. You know, here's your 7800, your 5200, your Atari Jaguar. And then I, I filled the bottom wow. with all sorts of different con uh, controllers and stuff and different accessories and some just weird, weird Atari stuff. There's so much more hiding over, but this is the cassette deck. I said, make sure you don't step on this, but it's a kid bid. And it came with Smurfs. Smurfs and Bernstein Bears. The only games I made for this Coleco kid vid. But lots of different joysticks. Joystick repair kits. And different accessories. of Just of Atari stuff. I love all these too. I, I think are really cool. Yeah, so you can buy these. This was a brand new one. And then it came with... This is stickers. It had a whole bunch of games pre-printed on it. You could stick the titles on it. Kind of like this. these were homemade ones here these i did those myself but you know when you wanted to see this these most of these have games in them so i use them for my homebrew games can you imagine like going over to your friend's house now with your ps4 and pulling out a little fake book that held your ps4 games like times have changed guys yeah. you know no, it's just a whole different ball game here for some of the accessories and stuff like that I guess you got a good view of the 64 system. We'll just go into it while it's here. So, you know, up here, here's a, a bunch of different variations of systems. You know, your gold system, your system that came with an extra atomic controller, um, you know, your Star Wars set, your standard sets, Donkey Kong green set, but then you also have a green set. You know, it's part of your fantastic colors. And in the comments, tell me which one I'm missing. It's easy. Yeah, it's easy. Two different variations of the hey, the hey You Pikachu set. One set came with like this really fancy Hey You Pikachu game included and like a keychain and all this stuff. And this one was just the system. So without the Hey You Pikachu, I believe is how that went. So two different variations of that. These are all the different, one of every different color controller in cardboard. I actually don't own any blister, blister ones of the controllers. I never had access to them, and when I was collecting, I stopped collecting more than ten years ago. Mm. Just never had blisters. Do have some loose controllers over there? Yeah, as well, well as this that is guy. yeah, this is the Nintendo Power, the little mail away thing, and the special controller. Now these didn't come together. You had to buy this separate, and then this was offered, you know, another time through the Nintendo Power magazines. Uh, you know, here I don't know why I have an extreme green and some watermelon. Well, why do I have watermelon controllers hanging up here? I know why you have watermelon now controllers. You know hint, why. hint, hint, yeah. guys. But, you know, here's a, this is the rarest controller boxed, um, besides blister pack controllers. They can be, they're really hard to find blister packs, um, but the extreme green controller. Uh, yeah, you know. I, don't, I don't see that very often, but even things like the E, like, you know, a lot of people know this, but like something like the EA Sports, like gamepad still boxed, yeah. like you just don't see stuff like that, you know, so it doesn't necessarily equate it to value. I've never even looked at this back here. What the heck is that? Oh, super. So I'll pull it down for yeah, you. yeah, please do. This Let's is that's the kind of stuff that I love, you know. So, yeah, oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. Available in four colors, so that's red. It's got the performance pack in there. That's 
Yeah. That's the worst controller ever, but it's really cool. I also had a Shark Pad Pro 64 when I was a kid. Exactly. You can tell that we were breaking the bank. Yeah, actually. <laughs> so, you know, just different different accessories, yeah, you know, for different collections. You know, your little RF adapter, your expansion packs, you know, your cleaning cartridges and memory cards. And uh, I am missing a few pieces of the 64 collection because they were sealed. I had them graded and sold, so I need to replace my Conkers. That's no big deal. Um, you know, I've sold the, sold it for a lot, but here's a really neat piece. So here's your, here's your standard gauntlet. A lot of people see. And then my, this is the little, one little window and it has a little pewter figure in there. He's tipped over right now. Barbarian. Yeah. It's really, that's see, really, really neat. When I was a kid, I had that exact version and I vividly remember throwing away that little pewter figure when I moved out. Be like, what do I need this for? And now that figure is so crazy desired by collectors, you know. It's just a, definitely a variant that you'd want to have in a complete yeah. collection. And it's but it doesn't, not easy to track you down. You don't have it's to not. have this to have a complete collection. No. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, there's always your variants, you know, your different variants, your regular release, your first release with the collector's edition, the gold cartridge, and you play your choice. And show off that thing that was in there, because I pulled that out the other day. It's uh, in your hand, in between it. Nope. Move that one. That. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know why. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, look, it's a Funko Land exclusive. They they thought it, it was pretty cool. The, yeah, it's like just it sitting, sitting there. The counter, yep. you know I, I mean? yeah, I, could... When I was going through this the other day, I saw that. I was like, oh, man, that's awesome. So, uh, Here's um, a lot of people talk about the the big box rampage, you know, and this is what makes it extremely rare is having the little plushy it's Ralph. keychain in there. Uh, I don't know much about uh, is. It, are they always Ralph, or is there ones of each monster? Do you know? I believe the top of your head? they have a couple different monsters. I think um, his name's Ralph. Correct me if yeah, I'm wrong, if guys. Yeah, you look on the back, oh, they yeah, have they do. three different monsters. Okay, so cool. I, I know some Was it random? It was random. You oh, never okay. knew what you were going to get. Interesting. And uh, some of these guys, there's a couple of these guys that have these things sealed, and it eats them alive because they don't know. Yeah, they, that makes sense. You know, and now they're like, well, how many do I have to have? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, you know, hiding in here is just... You know, oddball stuff like like this. Now, you know, this that's where this came from. You know, everybody oh, yeah. sees these. These are cool. And everybody loves paying four or five bucks for these, you know. But this is how people bought them back in the store. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. You buy them in a three-pack. And oh, I wonder if they have any hype to them. I wonder if they have a price tag on them. No. Oh, yeah. Yep. nineteen ninety nine. dollars <laughs> 99 $6 a piece now is a steal. Are you yeah. serious? Those, I put different ones in this one. <laughs> So, I guess we got to mark them up to nine ninety five, guys. Sorry about that. Inflation. Now you're getting a deal still. Do you think this is neat? It, it, this is gonna blow your mind, Chris. What do I have here? Uh banjo kazooie one. So it's a banjo kazooie three pack. Yeah, that's cool. And I've never found the, the outer box, shell. The outer shell. Yeah. That these three fell in. That's awesome. I think I've seen them, but. You know what I mean? Did you even know that existed? You know, Probably like, not. Yeah, something, something little things wild, to look for yeah. at conventions though too. Just like that kind of weird stuff that slides under the radar, you know. Yeah, you wanna you wanna have your collection. It wouldn't be expensive. As, I mean, if that sit on a shelf at a convention for twenty or thirty bucks, yeah. you know, be do dog. Just buy it up and well, you know, you have it, you as know? we talk about this kind of stuff with you guys, you know, like I could sit here and pull, tell you like uh, International Superstar Soccer two thousand is exceptionally rare, although, you know, I love 98 more personally. Uh, the Super Bowling's gone. Where's the sculptor's cut? You know, I need to learn the alphabet. So, like, you all know, and if you don't, yeah. it's as I should touching that box. Um, really rare, very expensive game. But, like, most people know that. So we kind of wanted to point out some stuff like the Rampage 2 box, like the Gauntlet Legends variant, where it's that's when you really start deep diving, you know, what are hard to find stuff. When you have a, when you just go for a collection, you know, you just want to start adding neat pieces to it. They're not going to be expensive. You know what I mean? These things, these things are just fun to have. Like, you know, up here is just like oddball bits of trimmer packs and, you know, rock, you know, and weird controllers. Here's a portable license case. You know, here's, and that's not really 64 related. There's a blister memory card, you know, stuff. You know, in the collection is a whole bunch of these not for resale carts. Um, I, I mean, these are amazing. I found them over the years. I have, there's more. They're all just kind of being slid in on top here. Some more of these. 
Uh, here is a, an, an original box for Zelda Ocarina of Time. So when the person went to the store the day they bought it, they actually got this Zelda bag and this Zelda Ocarina of Time poster. And then their, their cardboard game is in there. And the store had stacks of these. So, you know, the person's like, hey, can I have one of the shipping boxes too? And even the guy just gave him one. And this is in its original Funko bag. It's where I got my gold, uh, well, excuse me, it's where I got my ocarina, and I got that bag, but it was one of my uh, childhood sadness that I don't know why I didn't pre-order ocarina, and I still got it on launch date, so I didn't get a gold cart. So as a grown man, I have one now, and that's why we collect. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cassette boy? Yeah, that's awesome. Cassette boy color? Mm. Camera? Just, it's just fun to have What's a lot the of... blue uh, card over there? A blue Bassmaster. Yeah, you know, I just realized the other day I have a, the boxed one is the gray one, and I'm like, oh yeah, better. The box okay. is the same, but I need to get a different color. Oh, there's more, not for resales. Zelda 1080, Majora's Mask, yeah. And I, I don't want to come across as I'm taking these things lightly, like, oh, hey, you know, it's just, uh, I just haven't seen them in so long, you know what I mean? It's just, it's neat, but it's not a... Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just not as exciting anymore. <laughs> I haven't collected in so long now. I just have the collection. So things have changed. I'm going to put this up here. I don't like squeezing it in there. So, as you know, even right now, I'm not leaving this stuff sitting on the floor. There's a couple joysticks on the floor over there, but all this stuff is up elevated. God forbid the whole entire building flooded and it got two or three inches of water. You know what I mean? This is up high enough. Not, it's not going to happen where I had this collection, but still... You never know. And the floor is also cement, even though it has this really old, cheap carpet. You know, it's still cement. You could have condensation, you know, between different temperatures, and that could re mold could easily happen and stuff like that. You always got to think about where your collection is at and what could possibly happen to it. Can you imagine an earthquake? <laughs> Can you imagine looking in this room and everything There's getting dented and squished? So many systems. Yeah. So many systems would fall down. Oh, no. All right, let's move on to Super Nintendo, and I'm going to let Chris start pulling some stuff and doing his talking. So, um, it's really hard to even tell you where to begin when I start looking at this kind of stuff, right? You know, as we talk about everything that we're looking at, I mean, when you start looking at systems, you have the Mario pack-in, standard, you got the Mario All-Stars Super Mario World combo cart, Kirby Superstar, super underrated game. Maybe underrated is the wrong way to say it, but... Uh, you know, a lot of people recognize the Donkey Kong Country set box. It's that beautiful jungle background. Definitely not as cool as the Killer Instinct box, though, because that thing is freaking wicked. But it's when you don't start seeing things like, you know, the Killer Cuts combo and, um, God, brain farting over here. That one over there. Um, you know, yes, many people have seen Earthbound and, you know, it's popular and everyone knows that it was, you know thrown out in bins for dirt cheap but that one is not sealed by the way no. i just have it wrapped in plastic sometimes what we like to do is we shrink wrap the games so that way when they're collection like if we're selling it through the store or anything like that like there are things that we have shrunk wrap but we're obviously very transparent we're not trying to like pass anything off as sealed that isn't but we just want to create that extra layer of protection at this point because we know what's in it and you know, especially for our store, we and we offer we offer that to people if they ever want yep. a, something shrunk wrapped. Absolutely, so, you know, doesn't get any shelfware. Yep. Um. So I wanted to pull a couple things that I just thought were like neat to talk about. Um. Because again, we've spent a lot of time talking to you about like WADA and graded games and heritage and things like that. Um. And there's a difference between valuable and rarity. Um. Again, intrinsic value is what it is, right? These things are worth nothing. It you know it depends on what they are, but. Then if I have pure value, like, here's a really good example. This is a hard-to-find game, okay? Pretty expensive for completing the box. My guess off the top of my head is probably, like, 200 bucks, something like that. Maybe a little bit more nowadays. Um, I really wanted to point it out because I think it's one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. Um, it's Isometric Racer. Yeah, I just, I love Biker Mice from Mars, right? Um... But there's just so many cool things. I actually don't know about your Claymates. I didn't pull it off. Does it have it? So, yeah. Claymates had that lenticular piece that pops off of there. 
just cool things, you know, everyone is going to talk to you about Chrono Trigger, right? And don't get me wrong, Chrono Trigger is probably my favorite video game of all time after Ultima. It won't go all the way on because that one's open. pop out, right? But what not everyone's going to talk to you about is Captain Novelin. Now, Polly had a lot of people talk to you about Captain Novelin, right? Um, For those of you that don't know, this was to teach you how to take your insulin, right? Lots of people have seen it. But not a lot of people have seen it in this slip sleeve. So this slip sleeve is where they would show who they're actually, like, donating it out to or letting them use. That sleeve is... You don't see that sleeve. That's how I'm going to word that, right? Like, boom! Okay, I'm back. Teleportation. So, anyway, the Captain Novelin sleeve is something that's, like, again, very, very hard to find. Um, You know, if I started talking about games from this line... You want to know a really hard game to find? Casper. That's a hard game to find. Box especially, yes. Dracula X might be more valuable. <laughs> Holy crap, Casper's hard to find. Bronchi's another good example, uh, kind of like the Captain Novelin. I, as far as I interpret it to be, uh, it was to teach you how to use your inhaler, I think. Uh, Bronchi, the brontosaurus, bronchitis, mm-hmm. ha ha ha. We get that joke, you know? But when you start looking at these type of games... You know, I could use Incantation as an example of something that was really common for a while. The perception is that there was people that went and kind of scooped them all up and then kind of controlled the price of that. You know, I try not to be hyperbolic. You know what's a couple form. games down from that? Hurricanes. Yeah, where are you? There you go. You're right to it. Back. Yep. So same thing. That's a hard one to find nowadays, guys. You know, but it, they were common as crap for a while. You know, yeah. and now some of this stuff, you know, it's it, dried up. It's gone. Um, you know, international superstar soccer is another good example of a hard game. It's the third international superstar soccer I've showed you. I have fond memories of them from my childhood. Um, oh, what what is the ugly duckling of this whole bunch right in the dead middle? <laughs> Why did well, they make an orange box? Tell us. Because it's a blockbuster exclusive. This is That's right. Final Fight Guy. Um, so it was an import from Japan where they added Guy into Final Fight. It sucks. Don't play Final Fight. I'm sorry. I know that half of you just unsubscribed. That's okay. Same thing. You know, again, lots of people will hype up Mega Man X3. It's a really, really clean copy of X3, if I'm being completely honest. But then we'll look at something more like the Mega Man X, where you got standard Mega Man X. You got Majesco Mega Man X, right? To so the point where the Majesco almost looks fake, uh, just because it's dull, cheaper and, made, you yeah. know? And there might be a little bit of fading that's going on with that. I'm not 100% positive. You, but... you know, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to ask why I don't have this whole collection in box protectors. I haven't added to this collection in 10 plus years, yeah. if not longer. And I had all of it way before that. They didn't have box protectors when I started. And I don't feel like buying 5,000 box protectors and putting them on. I would have no skin left. And I don't handle these much anymore, and it's in a pretty dust-free room for the most part. Don't tell them to do it, because something tells me I'll be back here for a few hours putting them in box protectors. A few hours? (laughs) That would take you weeks. Uh, I want to use this as an example, because didn't we point out the other day when we were looking at it that the only way, as I spill everything, so as we talk about mint-graded games... If you've been watching our channel for a while, this is how this manual came in this box, guys. Just so you know. So when you see a sealed copy of this game in there, that's the only way they could fit it in this special Robocrop versus Terminator box. Folded in half and not even folded even. Chris is just failing epically on that. So, you know... That's some of the Super Nintendo stuff, right? You know, I tried to pull out just a couple things. Sure, you might know what Demon's Crest is, or you might have heard of King of the Dragons, right? These are desirable games that people want, right? They're they're popular. Um, they have a fan base behind them. There's tons of things, uh, you know. But then you can branch off to something like Artie Lightfoot, or, and I guess Artie's kind of desirable, I'm starting to blur the lines between both collector realms, right? It's like, it, it's just all up in there. But I did want to show off one other game before we stopped with that. Where are they? The Bombermans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're all right here, yep. So, and we'll bring them up here. Bomberman 1. Yeah, Grab Bomberman 1, though. And oh, I Well, I guess it goes both ways. It's more so with Bomberman 1. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I just wasn't even looking. 
So look at all the different variants that you have for Bomberman, right? So this is basically the way the game came. You got the, the big box, about the same size as Mario Paint, along with the multi-tap. Then you could buy the game separate. And then there's just two major variations. And I think this one on the right here is the one that's extremely hard to find because it doesn't really have, doesn't even say Super Nintendo on the front of it there. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It's interesting, to be honest. Yeah, it's a really neat variation. Yeah, oh, and I guess since we're talking about variations, there's one more. Where was it? Is it actually down at the bottom, or? Which, which one? The Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Oh, I only have one. Oh, uh, okay. I was wrong. <laughs> I don't have the second variation of Zombie Ate My Neighbors. All right, all right, all right. So, yeah, that's some of the super. All right, let's look at that all. Let's, I'm going to go back and go up kind of point out some of the i'll do some of the point out some of these systems so that is right there the original launch test market uh deluxe set basically but it does not say deluxe set underneath it right here and uh so that's part of the test market one for this and then over here hiding sideways is my standard rob set that says deluxe set this is a sport set miracle pianos uh, let's see, up above it is a challenge set, uh, with Mario 3, here's a, another, another challenge set, but this one also has, you know, extra bonus stuff in it, your standard control decks, you know, your, your orange zapper gun, your, another sports set, uh, there's, there's the action set down here, and then we actually, even behind it is some more systems, because, there's the gray gun and there's the red stripe boxes and stuff. But just an overall look. You know, now, these are... Tell them how I have these alphabetized. Well, these are all going to be alphabetized by different, like, subsets. Subsets the wrong word. Manufacturers. So you have all the manufacturers. So this is your Capcom lineup, right? And this is your Data East lineup. So I have them in alphabetical order by manufacturer. Right. You and then alpha, yeah, and then in alphabetic order within each manufacturer. You know, I think a lot of you that have been looking at this stuff recognize what we call these. We call these black box sets, and then we call even things like this. Look, just as I go through, as we look through different stuff, everything recognize that. What's that mean? If you learned from last week, well, look, Matt, Matt sticker, sticker seal, seal black box baseball launch. Just oh. scanned right over that. Oh, other way around. See. Yeah, that's important though. Well, it's going to be important for the comments. Yep. <laughs> We've been actually digging through these a lot lately, so there's a lot of weird spacing going on right now. Um, we have some games um, off being graded, some especially a lot of the test market ones. And actually, we even found more test market ones the other day. I just it takes a little more closer examination sometimes. Hiding up, hiding up underneath here, Chris. There's a factory sealed uh, Acronoid. That comes with the. You know, the special controller. And, you know, even not factory sealed. I, I think I sold one of those controllers not too long ago for about 85, 100 bucks. I got you know? a couple cases of that game, all factory sealed. And over 10 years ago, they were $100 a piece. Like, man, I had a mint cart, a manual, and the controller. And I was at Retropalooza, at, and someone was just trying to sell the... He would not sell me just the box. And I was like, dang it. So I just gave up and sold it. You know, as I look through some of this stuff, so there's like tons of cool games right the stuff that i personally really love though more than anything is the weird stuff so something i love about coming to this collection room is i see something that i've never seen every time i come in it and i've been in this room hundreds of i times. think that i'd explain to you what that was <laughs> yeah, today I, that's a good example right so like the speed board <laughs> nowadays kids want to get good right yeah great for sitting down <laughs> and just putting it right on your yeah, lap you know um, I think what I've decided is my new favorite thing in this whole collection is this right here, which is the Captain Clean Cleaning Swabs by Nintendo. Look okay, at ar Look at this hardcore so, Iron yeah, Man with two, two awesome. lieutenant bars. Oh, no, he's a captain. So, but, oh, yeah. He, he is a captain. Yeah, right. That's he, like gold second lieutenant bars, he's I not, think. He's not just any captain, Jason. He's Captain Clean. Yeah, I guess okay. depends what forces he's really important. Right? I had these when I was a kid, but never did I have the marketing where I needed an army man in order to convince me to buy cleaning swabs. And that's the stuff that I miss, right? Um, but as we get back into talking about rare stuff, 
Here's something that you're not going to see every day. The Goal Goal 13. Still factory sealed on the inside with the Goal Goal 13 comic. This is some of the kind of stuff that, like, you know, the more and more we talk about this and the more and more I learn, I do realize that it's getting harder and harder and harder to find some of this stuff in make condition and sealed condition. I'm, I didn't think it was as hard as it was until I really started researching it and learning it, right? But stuff like that, <laughs> that's on a whole different playing field, right? Like, that's stuff that you're just not going to see very often. And who knows, maybe someone in the comments has 150 in a shipping box somewhere, but I don't think you do. I, I, <laughs> exactly I purchased that on eBay, and it set up there for, I think, a while. Yeah. And it was... It was an oddity. I don't even know how long ago I got it. I, I'm not going to overestimate it. It wasn't like 10 years ago, but I yeah. think it was pretty long time ago. And uh, it, it was like $200, yeah. which was astronomically, astronomically high. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, that crazy. is just cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why that's why I bought it. It right. was just cool. And I didn't care how much it was worth. It wasn't worth $200 when I bought it. You know, you know? We uh, talked about uh, how to identify prints. So I'd be remiss if I didn't at least point out like, Left bros. Um, what the, else did I just pull out recently? How about the 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 gyromite and the stack ups and yep. you know because we talked about at the very beginning of talking about the Nintendo set, the deluxe set. Okay. You know, but then this this is an interesting pieces here. Let's talk about them. So first we have the Rob. Okay, so this was. If you don't know, since we presume you know everything, Rob was packed with the deluxe set, right? So, essentially, Nintendo was worried because video games had been doing really, really poor. And I know a lot of you have heard this, so I apologize. But video games were doing poorly, and Nintendo was like, crap, let's put a robot in there with it. Let's it's a it toy. Go. It's a toy. It's a Nintendo Entertainment System. Rob looks sure similar to a really popular character from Short Circuit, right? So, robots were kind of big in that period of time. So, we had the deluxe set, and that's what released. Well, eventually they started releasing these on their own. So, first you have Rob. Now, Rob himself, this one is just a plain Rob. He doesn't even have his own hands, okay? He doesn't have his own hands. So, they sold Rob independently. Then, they sold the Gyromite set, which had the additional pieces that you needed for the, Rob the in order to The proper hands to drive the, grab the gyros, yeah. And then, same thing, you have a stack up as well. And this stack up has his unique hands, too. Correct. You know, to grab the little pucks that are inside there and play. And so, you know, you have, obviously, from the world's best movie, The Wizard, the Nintendo Power Glove. It's so bad. It, <laughs> it's so bad that it's awesome. I love the Power Glove. But it's here, so hold bad. this for a second. <laughs> if we're going to talk about the Power Glove. That. Sorry, guys. I could have made that. Oh. oh. Let's talk about the Power Glove. Does this feel like Pulp Fiction opening the case, guys? Let's talk about oh, that. Oh, look at that. All your owner's manuals. The power glove. I don't know. There shouldn't be an RF adapter in here. And Yo. beneath it, you all your sensor marks. Save some ladies for the rest of us. Oh my god. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> How about this a really neat piece? And that thing's awesome. You know what? I don't think anybody knows where this thing came from. Yeah. I think as many times as we've talked about this and shown this off over the years, and there's other plenty of these pop up for sale. I mean it's a rare item, but they're never really Nobody knows the true where it came from. Some people said it's for professors at a college. Some nobody knows. Nobody knows. But how about a neat oddity? Awesome. You know. So again, uh, if I look through some of these, you know, some titles that I think are kind of just interesting, um, and I'm just gonna pull these blindly. Uh, I always actually say Power Punch Two. I think is really cool because it was supposed to be Mike Punch, uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out Two. Obviously, we know what happened with that. Um, and then, like, weird stuff. Like, even games... You know, we work at a video game store. So I was talking about this when I was going through the collection earlier. And thinking, like, man, like, not even... 10% of the games that are here is what's come in in the uh, almost two years that I've worked here, right? So there's games, like... If I'm at conventions and stuff, I see. But, like, I'm just gonna promise you that no one's ever gonna turn in the mutant virus. It's just not gonna happen. It, 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 you know, everything might happen at some point. Uh, you know, super bad glare on this yeah. Maxi 15. You know, and so we have popular titles. You have your more expensive titles. You know, you got your first print Mega Man 1s. And you got your, what, we probably have a DuckTales 2 over here, right? So if you're in the game collecting hobby, you know some of these titles off the top of your head. 
They're popular. You see people mention them. You see people talk about Snow Brothers. But you know what you probably don't see people mention as much? I don't know. Werewolf from Data East. There, there's really no one doing a Hidden Gems video on Shirin the Ruler. You know, uh, what did we point out earlier? You had those two, I don't even know where they are, the Hollywood Squares. Loops. <laughs> you know, and again, I'm not even going to call some of these necessarily rare. I mean, I will say that they're uncommon based on perception for myself, for what I see. You know, this was not, a cool one. Not rare. Just really neat variations. I mean, they're both uh, oval seal, but, you know. Different way, different packaging. So, you know, there's just so many different things that are in these collections. There's so many different stuff that you could go for. It really just depends on what you love, right? I always say that my personal favorite thing in my collection, as silly as it is, I have this, like, brand new Aladdin Super Mario Brothers the movie lunchbox. Is it, you know... A Left bro sealed 150 grand expensive and rare? Absolutely not, but I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things. It's still got the original paperwork in the thermos, and it's so stupid that it exists, and I, it just it does it for me, okay? I, I love it. It's my favorite thing that I own, despite any of the expensive games that I have. And so that's when you find that cool thing that really speaks to you, right? That That's what's important when you're doing this. It's hard to keep the collecting bug going sometimes, especially when you start to amass something at this type of magnitude, right? You just have so much. What else do you want? What else can you have? Um, but I think there's a lot of us out there that are just collectors by nature, and you'll keep finding something, that's for sure. <laughs> so that's just my two cents. Well, uh, me and Chris, thank you for hanging out for this extremely long video of uh, showing off the game collection. And I'm going to try to, like I said, uh, bookmark different sections of what we were showing off. Like, we didn't even get to this wall. This is all uh, ColecoVision, Intellivision, um, a Channel F collection, um, uh, Odyssey 2 collection of boxed games within the big box games. And uh, there's even some other stuff hiding down in here. Uh, just, you know, who, who knows when you start looking through here what, what you're going to find. I mean, I love all these old sets and all the new sets um and uh, i'm still collecting i'm just not collecting like i used to but i can't get rid of that bug so i'm always trying to get more basically all i do now is upgrade i get something in and i try to do a box upgrade but i've told people that many times so it's getting a little cold i'm probably just gonna put on this jacket if you don't mind oh oh yeah this yeah <laughs> Yeah, I hope. Yeah, size medium. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I will not be putting on this jacket. Apparently. Yeah, me, me neither. That's why it's in such good that's shape. Yeah, it's in great shape. So, on Craigslist, 12, 13 years ago for fifty bucks. Man, you know, you, I mean, nobody you, cared. You'd be surprised the stuff that you find. Uh, got a local buddy. What did he find? The um, Nintendo Power uh, the championship hat or whatever. That's Savers oh, yeah. for four bucks. That's Savers where I found my NES burn and test cart. So, you know, it, it, it happens. Clothing, especially. You'll find some cool stuff if you dig through it, but... Well, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of the collection. I haven't done this in years, and uh, it's changed quite a bit since uh, most people don't see this anymore. And, uh, you know, over the next couple years, you know, who knows what I'm going to be doing with this collection. Uh, moving it out, parting it out to new good homes who can preserve and keep it going. You know, haven't really decided yet, but, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. You know, this is going to be a long one and definitely hit that like and subscribe button. We'd love to hear your comments and feedback and definitely questions. If you guys want to know anything about the collection, um, you know, just shoot, we'll, we'll answer it out for you. So do the best yeah. we can go ahead step back further, further. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. All right. School. The longer I'm in here, the more free stuff I get. Yeah. I'm gonna have a lot of boxes. There's, no parts in there's nowhere to go. All right. Yeah. All right. See everybody later. Quid pro quo. You can't check my pockets. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys.